When we've learned about chemistry in the past, we've talked about chemical equations in which we have reactants on the left and products on the right. We read the equation in such a way that the reactants proceed to the products from left to right. However, there are many interesting chemical reactions that can take place in either direction. For example, we might be familiar with one mole of N2O4 gas decomposing to form two moles of NO2 gas. However, the reverse reaction can also take place so that two moles of NO2 gas can react to form one mole of N2O4 gas. Instead of writing two separate equations to talk about these forward and reverse reactions, we combine this equation into one chemical equation and we change the arrow from a typical one-directional reaction arrow into a split two-directional equilibrium arrow. We call it an equilibrium arrow because when you have a reactions that have both forward and reverse components, reactions will reach a state that we call chemical equilibrium. This is the situation when opposing reactions proceed at equal rates in opposite directions. At equilibrium, the concentrations of reactants and products no longer change, even though both the forward and reverse reaction are still taking place. In terms of rates, we would see that for N2O4 reaction, the rate for the forward reaction is the rate constant for the forward reaction times the concentration of N2O4. The rate for the reverse reaction would equal the rate constant for the reverse reaction times the square of the concentration of NO2. Since at equilibrium, the forward reaction rate and the reverse reaction rate are equal, that means that Kf times the concentration of N2O4 is equal to Kr times the concentration of NO2 squared. When we separate out the concentrations and the rate constants, we get the concentration of NO2 squared on top and the concentration of N2O4 on the bottom. And that ratio is equal to the forward rate constant divided by the reverse rate constant. Instead of using two separate rate constants, we combine these into what we call an equilibrium constant. As we've mentioned previously, this constant indicates that the ratio of the concentration terms will be the same at equilibrium. And this will be the case no matter what the initial concentrations of the reactant and product were. Let's look at an equilibrium example in graphical form. In this graph, we have the concentrations of three different species. We have the yellow line representing the concentration of hydrogen iodide and the blue line representing the concentration of H2, and the red line representing the concentration of I2. When H2 and I2 react, they combine together to form hydrogen iodide. Initially, we have some concentration of hydrogen gas and some concentration of iodine. At the starting point, we also have no hydrogen iodide present. However, as we allow the reaction to begin to proceed, we see decreases in the concentration of the hydrogen and the iodine and an increase in the concentration of the hydrogen iodide. Once we get to equilibrium, represented here by the dashed line in the middle of the graph, we see that the concentration of HI, the concentration of I2, and the concentration of H2 remain relatively constant. Despite the fact that the concentrations remain constant, it's important to remember that because this is a dynamic equilibrium, the forward reaction and the reverse reaction are still taking place. After watching this video, you should be able to define the relationship between forward and reverse reactions at equilibrium. This includes the concentration conditions that define equilibrium and the rate conditions that define equilibrium.